Welcome to Switch Corner, my name is Alex. Today we're taking a look at Ruby Arrowfile on the Nintendo Switch. An action platformer, it's out to please both fans and newcomers alike. But can it deliver? Well, that is what I'm here to find out. So hit subscribe, join us here for reviews and deals daily, and let's get started. If you are grabbing this or anything else from the eShop then consider using cornershop.gg for discounted eShop credit. You will be getting 10% off at checkout using a code corner and this is going to be instant delivery via email. Ruby then, first off, I've never watched it. I heard it started strong but has gone downhill ever since so I never did jump in. My understanding as well of there's some controversy around the series and how they decided to move forward following the death of the creator. That all said though, the story here as a newcomer, it was easy enough to pick up. I thought there were some fun characters in the arc, it made sense. For those that watch them, it's set during volume 7, so no doubt, if you've not watched up to that point yet, it's gonna contain spoilers. Story is simple though, essentially orbs have appeared around this city and they are summoning Grimm, the enemy in this game. You need to get to the bottom of what's behind this recent series of attacks and the mysterious technology. Along the way though it had me hooked and you'll meet fan favourite characters, at least according to the eShop description, and that includes Penny, Winter, General Ironwood and the Ace Operatives. Gameplay then, and it's an action platformer though influenced by Metroidvanias in some ways. Kicking off the game though, it introduces us to the four main team members, that's Ruby, Weiss, Blake and Yang. Each can freely be selected in game using the triggers, and we share a health bar amongst them in the upper left of the screen. The hearts are the core health, the green bar that is your energy. This acts as a shield, but it can also be used to fire a gun for each character. I like the balance of risk and reward here. You can attack ranged, so it definitely feels safer, but now you're gonna be vulnerable to incoming attacks. Each character then also has a special move semblances. Ruby can dash, which provides invincibility frames. Yang ground smashes, which can clear the way. Weiss creates platforms, and then Blake can create a shadow of herself that stays in place and will mirror her actions. It's worth noting at this point then you won't see a huge amount of experimentation in the footage because way forward they requested we keep footage to chapter 1 and 2 out of a total of 5. You know these areas very much the setup of the game, naturally though that was a request for spoilers sake and it absolutely makes sense, they want everyone to enjoy it. The characters though overall they are fun, initially I stuck with Ruby but by chapter 4 and 5 it demands some switching in and out whether that's for battle or to overcome some basic basic environmental puzzles. Each character will also then throughout this journey uncover a single upgrade for their semblance and that's where the metroidvania influence comes into play. Look sure we get some branching pathways in the levels but otherwise it's really just the idea you need to acquire the single upgrade to advance in some of the locations. Do not come here expecting some huge interconnected map, it's lots of smaller levels that you kind of go back and forth between on what is a world map. Additionally expect to visit the same location multiple times. The platforming though it feels decent, the combat same thing, I wish we had a defensive measure, that for sure tripped me up initially but here it's really again learning to leverage the character's abilities like the dash, you really have to figure it out and then the game it could have done with some sort of tutorial initially because Felt a little of trial and error as I kind of stumbled through the opening moments just trying to get to grips with the whole control scheme. The tutorial that is in here, it's nothing more than essentially this button does this without any real world example and I think it definitely needed more. Also it's worth knowing then levels they are not linear, you will need to talk to someone first in one of a few NPC packed areas and they will give you a number of options, again this isn't really explained opening the game. Another point that may frustrate some as well, but it's very much a part of the strategy here, you can either move or strike, you cannot do both at the same time, so the combat can feel almost very stop and start at times, you'll also want to make use of the duck mechanic. Outside of this though, expect to find a few stores, always the same character, and he will have all sorts of goodies from health recovery to reviving rings on death to extra hearts and skill points. 
Those skill points then, that is because we have a basic skill tree as well. You'll find plenty of these points around the world as well, but each character has four areas that you can filter these into from strength to defense. Additionally, enemies, they will drop one of three things. That's hearts to replenish health, green orbs that go into the energy meter. You know, again, it acts as that shield or the gun, so you'll definitely want to be picking these up. And then finally, they do drop as well cash. Problems though for gameplay, it's extremely easy to exploit the game first of all, or specifically the boss encounters. These are actually quite good fun, but at the store they have that recovery ring that I mentioned, it's super cheap. You look at these at basically a continue option and you can stack them, meaning you can basically stand there, take damage and just butter mash away at their health. Additionally, the levels, they are somewhat basic. Using the term Metroidvania is definitely a bit of a stretch if it's in relation to the level design itself. It's essentially just a few underground sections that we can almost dig into, but generally each level it's going to be short. And then also the enemies, they definitely tend to stick to the same designs across multiple sections. So that repetition, it really kind of, you know, begins to set in. This is particularly true when you factor in, you often go back to them multiple times as you may have to access now another small area. They keep on regenerating and yeah, I definitely got some burnout. Another thing I'm not so keen on, the skill points are scattered throughout levels in chests. I would have preferred an XP system because quickly you recognize that you can actually just dash straight past these enemies, get to the next screen and really, you know, the only reward for combat, as I said, is cash, energy or even those hearts. But most of the time I had plenty of both, so there was really no motivation for me to head into battle. I think they actually maybe recognize this too as well, because the game it has this trick, it constantly locks you into a screen to take down enemies before you can move on. And it very much feels like they've kind of caught onto this and now they want to lock you in place, make you battle it out. The problem is they are so frequent at points they quickly get dull. Finally, not really an issue, but this, it took me around five to six hours and there's really no additional difficulty options to bring you back. I wasn't in a rush either, I was definitely exploring. I didn't, however, max out the skill tree, which is simply stats. But yeah, do I really have the motivation to go back and max out a skill tree when I've already overcome the game? There's really no benefit to me. I had fun with it, honestly, but it basically sets up the formula in the opening moments. It rarely deviates from it outside of a single special skill upgrade, and then it gives you little reason to go back in. Graphically then, I really like it. The game is side-scrolling, but they've gone for that 2.5D design, which is in keeping with Ruby, and the animations then are a particular highlight. It's nice to see that they've kind of made the effort for the basic skill set. The world and the locations then, we get a map. It's essentially biomes with numerous levels packed in, making for what is a decent amount of variety. Problems, as I mentioned, enemies not only act the same, but they look identical, which is disappointing given the fact it's quite a small, self-contained world, and I do wish they'd maybe done a little more here. Also, the same can be said for the menus. They felt kind of almost clunky. It's all just very basic. The highlight, though, the positive, I do want to finish on that for graphics. Between chapters, we get some incredible cutscenes that look like they were ripped straight from the show. <laughs> Audio finally and the sound effects decent with each character packing a variety of effects for their attacks and you know defensive measures. Then the world enemies they have the occasional piece as well but nothing what I'd call groundbreaking. The highlight though is by far the between chapter cutscenes. These are fully voice acted and then the music in game as well it is absolutely stunning. It goes everywhere from you know player full to intense but it's also got this I don't know, there's just a really good vibe to the whole experience. The biggest disappointment for me when it comes to the audio, there's a lot of text dialogue sequences and they really should have voice acted these out. I think it would have added a huge amount of character. So the final verdict on this one, it's an action platformer with a dash of Metroidvania and some unusual design decisions. I found moments I really liked were then punctuated by areas where I was backtracking, either cheating the game, jumping between levels, or simply again, yeah, exploiting mechanics that are within the game for you to use. I still had fun though, and I'm sure fans of the series will too. They'll enjoy this kind of expansion of this world. With that in mind though, like I still had fun again, quirks and all, and it's an above average 6 out of 10 from me. Will you be adding this one to the library then or are you holding onto that cash? Let me know in the comments down below. Then hit subscribe, join us here for reviews and deals daily. And I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.